Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, we are starting the new liturgical year today. In this new liturgical year, we have to understand it begins with the birth of Jesus, but the preparation for the birth of Jesus. That is why we call it Advent, the coming. Now this particular time of coming, as we realize, is the immediate coming of Jesus at Christmas, the celebration of his birth. However, we know Jesus has already come, has already saved us, but the church prepares us in this first Sunday of every year prepares us with preparing ourselves for the last, the second coming of Jesus. Am I prepared to meet him when he calls me? In the first reading from the epistle of Saint, or from the book of Isaiah, which is almost the end of the book, the people there and Isaiah speaking for the people tells the Lord Help us to be prepared. We know we have gone away from you. We know we have done wrong. But why do you allow us to go wrong? Please bring us back. You can understand the cry of a child wanting to come back. In the second reading from the epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, it's the very beginning of the epistle. And Paul talks about precisely being prepared for the Lord's coming. In the Gospel reading from St. Mark's Gospel, this year we will be reading from St. Mark's Gospel, we are told the immediacy, this is going to happen. When it will happen, we don't know. Just be prepared. The important thing is be prepared. Stay awake. Do not be person who are sleepy in the sense of not taking into consideration what's going to happen. And now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist in a worthy manner, admitting that the times we have been careless in our preparation, we ask God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Yeah. 
Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Let us pray. Remember, we are in Advent. We do not have the Gloria during this time. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth and to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at the right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah You O Lord are our Father our Redeemer from of old is your name O Lord why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of our servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. You came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old no one heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God beside you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time. And shall we be saved? We have all, because like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you and have made us melt in the hands of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Your response, O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. O God, God, bring Christ us back. Let Christ your face Christ shine Christ on us, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Enthroned on the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse up your might and come to save us. Response O Lord, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. God of hosts, Turn again, we implore, look down from heaven and see. Visit this wine and protect it, the wine your right hand has planted. The Son of Man you have claimed for yourself. Response, O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. May your hand be on the man at your right hand, the Son of Man you have confirmed as your own. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Response, O God, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. 
that in every way you are enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge. Even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you are called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his servant in charge each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all. Stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel wipe away our sins. My dear sisters and brothers, as I told you at the beginning, we are beginning the liturgical year. And this liturgical year begins with the coming of Jesus. But the church in her wisdom prepares us in this first reading or in the first Sunday for the second coming of Jesus. When we will have to answer for all that we have done. Now we realize during these many months when you have not been able to come to church when people have found themselves at, a, at the loose end with many things, schools have not been open, children are, are at home, your husband and your wife are at home together, and so is the family. Maybe this is a very good thing, but in quite a few cases there have been misunderstandings and some things which have not gone quite the way it should. At the same time, we cannot deny People have begun to ask, why has this happened? Lord, why have you allowed this to happen? Can you see in the first reading the very same words which the people were speaking? But rather than blaming God, they are blaming themselves and this is where they have, they have changed. Have we changed? They say, Lord, why have you allowed us to go wrong? We have gone astray. We are like people, like children who don't understand what we are doing and we are going and going to do something which will hurt us. Please bring us back. Is this the feeling we get? Is this the awareness we are aware of? If this is the case, then this is excellent. This is the real Advent preparation. Because now we have focused on the Lord. You take over. Please bring us back. In the second reading, and remember the response which we had, read them again, bring us back, let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. 
I don't know of your own experience. You know, when I was a kid and mummy got angry with me, I would try my best to draw her attention and look at her. She would turn her face and move away from there. And that's the thing I did not want. I wouldn't mind if she gave me a pasting at that time. But I wanted her to look at me. Don't you, haven't you experienced this? Now look at the words here. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. This is the feeling of a child talking to his parent or to his mother. Please, I have done wrong. Please understand. Now please look at me. Let me be saved. Now this should be the attitude we should have. Whatever may have been the situation which we have gone through, we have done wrong, we have done many things wrong, doesn't matter. But now look at the Lord and ask Him to take you back. Bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. In the second reading, St. Paul writing to the Corinthians, his first epistle and it's the very beginning of the first epistle. He is aware of what has happened, the marvels that have happened. Remember, before this, Paul was in a place called Athens where he very cleverly spoke in terms which he was aware of and he was confident in. But he made a fool of himself because the people began to laugh at him. And he realized, I am going with Paul's wisdom. This is wrong. I am going now with the foolishness of the cross. He came to, to Corinth across from Athens and he preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. And you know what happened? He was able to start a church in Corinth. He couldn't start a church in Athens. Why? Because the power of God, the wisdom of God. This is what we got to understand. And here he is telling them, I know what has happened to you. You all have become really deepened in the love of God. Carry on. But now he is also asking them, let there be fellowship. We need this. Because sometimes, because we are close together, because we are the uh, pandemic, we are all at home, we could begin to draw apart, begin to fight with one another. We have gotten to be growing in fellowship. Let's ask the Lord to help us. We can't do it alone. But let's ask the Lord to help us. In the Gospel reading, Jesus is making us understand, be prepared always. When is the Lord going to come? Don't worry about when He is going to come. Are you prepared? That's enough. And do not worry about this and that. This will happen, that will happen. Wet, whatever may happen. The Lord is the Master. He will help us. With this confidence, we start this new liturgical year. Longing for the Lord's coming at Christmas, yes. But fully prepared. If the Lord wants to call us, here I am, Lord. Take me home. Let us remember in a very special way all the loved ones, many of you all have lost perhaps during this pandemic, or people who have not been able to come in contact with because they are in other places and, and locked up. Whereas we remember them with confidence, we ask the Lord, let your face shine on us, all of us, and we shall be saved. Now let us all stand and say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He went down to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us bring our intentions to our Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, for all 
beginning with our Pope, bishops and others, that they may be all helping us and themselves to be prepared for the Lord's coming when He calls us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray, Lord, for uh, civil authority, that they understand that this is the time when we have to be giving an answer to God. When the time comes, they should be prepared. That they do things for the good of all the people. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here to pray and celebrate this Eucharist, asking the Lord to help us to be always prepared with love, understanding and fellowship among ourselves. With His grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our Jesuit fathers who have had various intentions to be prayed for, that you, Lord, help and bless them and bless their intentions in the way you know what is best. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For any intention you wish to pray for privately, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, God our loving Father, in your merciful kindness, hear the prayers of your people who have come before you. You know what is best for us. We want to be prepared for your coming whenever you call us. Because you love us, you'll take care of us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of His holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below. Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise 
in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God of might, heaven and the earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the high, highest, Hosanna in the highest, holy. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death, O Lord until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters. Pray for whomever you wish to pray for. Remember also those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Called to be united as brothers and sisters, let us say the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of the Lord's peace. Peace be with you. Let them oh God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but you only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for Spiritual Communion At thy feet, O my Jesus, I prostrate myself, and I offer thee repentance of my contrite heart, which is humbled in its nothingness and in thy holy presence. I adore thee in the sacrament of thy love. I desire to receive thee into the poor dwelling that my heart offers thee, while waiting for the happiness of sacramental communion. I wish to possess thee in spirit. Come to me, O my Jesus, since I, for my part, am coming to Thee. May Thy love embrace my whole being in life and in death. I believe in Thee, I hope in Thee, I love Thee. Amen.
soul of my Savior, sanctify my breast, body of Christ be thou my saving gift. Blood of my Savior, bid me in thy tide, wash me in water flowing from thy side. Strength and protection, may thy passion be. O blessed Jesus, hear and answer me. Deep in thy wounds, Lord, hide and shelter me, so shall I never, never part from thee. God and defend me from the former line in death's dread moment make me only thine call me and bid me come to thee on high where The Lord will bestow his bounty and our earth shall yield its fruit. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, and even now, as we walk in the passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold on to what is which endures forever. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ooh.